So with that, I shall hand you over to, to, to Shamal. Thank you. Hi there. Hi. Right, I've, I've got, uh, um, I'm going to start with pastels. Uh, what have we got? 50, 8 o'clock, isn't it, the um, yeah. uh, break? So I'll, I'm going to try a few before I... Did I do... I did the black lady and the bearded guy the last time. Yeah. I didn't do... Yeah. Did I do that one? Yeah, I've got uh, I've got a nice uh, idea about you in that one. Uh, chuck out a couple of birds as well. Oh, uh, I want to do a cityscape as well on there. Oh, yeah. uh, so like a cityscape, a uh, portrait of a lady, and two birds. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Oh, I've got a couple of birds on here already. I do these as little sketches for paintings. You'll see from the um, cityscape, I, I use them to kind of simplify stuff. Uh, so this portrait I like though, I've, I haven't done a painting of it yet, but um, the idea is, it's a way of getting... <coughs> oh, go on that one. <laughs> this one's the one that's been... Uh, uh, the boys kind of left me this one. <laughs> you stole it. They got a really big one now. But it, when you go for a poo, you can't really because <laughs> it's so big. So I hold it one hand. And... <laughs> right, first thing I'm going to do is get her face down. So the idea is I want to keep it really cool because of what's going to come later. So I've got to obliterate, I've got kind of a puffing under here. I'll obliterate that first. So my skin tone is going to be a kind of magenta with blue. This is a acrylic graph pastel made by Golden. It's, got, it's like a gesso with the pumps in it. Uh, they, uh, other people do it, uh, what are they called? Um, yeah, there's lots of them in, in, um, uh, on Jackson's, but uh, I like this one because you can just hammer it. Um, when I used to illustrate, I'd use this stuff. Clients would come back and say, oh, we need this change and this change. Because it was so bulletproof, I could just rub it out and use it again. The only thing is, it's uh, transparent. So, um, you're kind of stuck with the colour you've got for your, for your board. So that's my base colour. Right, drawing her is a series of triangles. So if I tap her, you can do that. Right, so I'm going to draw her now. Now I've drawn her, <laughs> I'll go on to the rest of it. So, so what you've done is, triangle, dash, triangle, or V, dash, V, and, a, and that's all you need. Um, I did this with my life, just faffed around bloody ever. <laughs> so that across there, that across there, dark underneath there. Not there. She won't look exactly the same because I've made her nose too long. So if I join it all up. I like um, stuff that makes things easy. Um, that's the illustration in me, I suppose. You've got tight deadlines and um, you try and make it as simple as possible. That goes too far, so I come down here, up, and around. So I've just joined all my uh, triangles together. That's my face. And a bit of hair there. So I've got, I want some cool colour going all the way back here. Oh, not that colour though. <laughs> These are unison pastels. 
They're quite expensive units and pastels. And I always get them from my local shop in Salisbury, so uh, they're even more expensive than they should be. <laughs> but I like going in and having an art shop locally. My ear is in line with my upper lip. So line across, line down, that gives me my ear. We've been doing life drawing in the classes uh, that I do every week. And uh, it's all been about measuring this week. A bit kind of Nefertiti kind of thing about her. So that's her neck <coughs> there, next there. form as well. I wouldn't normally have made her so light. I'd make her a little bit darker and then bring up the light. So I've got to darken her face a bit. I'm going to use blues. I'm putting blue on so I'm cooling her so she can contrast what I'm going to do here. Neck. It's just like using oils. You put the colour on and then you move it around. Nostril. Quite dark around here. Up in the ear. Uh, a little bit darker, whatever colour that is. Darker beat. Half lips. Oh, not that colour. <laughs> There's a uh, Someone said about the uh, Royal Pastoral Society, if you, if you blend it, because pastels aren't meant to be blended, you shouldn't blend them apparently. What? Yeah, that's what the Royal Pastoral Society say. <laughs> not being a proper artist, I'm, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> but that's what the proper artists say. Who would think they know? They do know. I'm doing it all wrong. No, I've never been invited to show in the more passive side. <laughs> no, I'm just um, creating form. Um, it's easier if you have this paper to start off with. So a bit, of, a bit more dark, maybe a bit of snazzy blue going in and out. Dark at the bottom. I'll get the and move on. <laughs> and hang about. Now, I don't do a lot of these now, primarily because when I go, I like to do about six, and um, it's not, and I plan for about three days. It's just stupid, really. But I do enjoy them. Apart from Woking, 
If you're listening, Woki. <laughs> what happens? Oh, nothing. I'll, I'll, on camera, I can't, I'll see, see you later until then. <laughs> right, now, then I want to... I did this work, uh, I've done this in oil. So, I want to put, I want to control my tones. So, everything's cool and subdued. And by contrast, I'm going to get a bit of a bling. And I put my gold on. So it's a, it's a kind of exercise in doing gold. I'm taking a bit of pastel off. If I did this in oil, I'd take the oil off. So I can get really bright warms. Standing in the way, aren't I? So that kind of thing. Now you can do this with oil or acrylics really easily, just like this. Right, one, two, that, that's enough. Right, now I start off with a tonal progression of burnt sienna. That's the thing with. Um, Pastels, finding the right colour. Burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. Burnt sienna. So give us a little bit more highlights in the blue. You, you don't want to go too light because it will interrupt the tonal range. But you could give her a little bit, it's a tricky one. If you go too light, you lose the impact of this. But around that cheek, she's got beautiful cheeks. Brings her out a bit more. And gorgeous neck. Right. Now, where did that go? Now I go for the right, uh, I'll do it down here. Raw Sienna. Coming across. Well, it is a bit different. Compared to the oil, I might need a dark up there. Oh, it's a dark up there. Right, Cadmium yellow deep, I suppose. Not like an orange. What colour is that? Oh, it's got more bling to it. Try that. That's a bit too orange. I'm going to subdue it with a bit of the raw sienna. Try blending that. So I'm pushing out from the light, wiping, pushing out from the light, wiping, so I'm not going to compromise my lights too much. So I want all of this subdued and calmed down. If you do this on white paper, it wouldn't really work. So you need the um, the lightest part to be the gold part. Like that. 
cadmium yellow beak, which is kind of like an orange. Oh, that's the colour I wanted. That's kind of the, that's a lighter wall sienna. Maybe a yellow, yeah, yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. Then you're going to Cabby Melody, which is that colour. <coughs> that colour? Lovely creamy these pastels. And then white. Oh, try and make yellow. Um, I'm going to sign these so you can have them. <laughs> so whoever wants this is welcome to take it. I'm not supposed to do that, but uh, I don't do these very often. How would you choose though? Right, but... Sorry? We'll raffle it at Christmas. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I did a raffle for uh, Stoke by Claire, and uh, I, I was amazing. Um, uh, did some lovely stuff, and then um, they, uh, they, they raffled it, and they, they said, Could you have, can we have a thing for the raffle? I said, yeah, yeah, of course you can. And, um, and the old lady won the raffle, and they said, uh, pick anything, anything you like. Um, and my picture was up there. Uh, and, she picked the bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been watching Stoke by Claire. <laughs>
If you're an expert in, in birds, uh, you're not going to buy my pictures. Let's face it. Is it Michelle laughs like that? <laughs> right. So I've got, I'm reckoning that's my bling point, the point where it goes really um, intense. So I, I build everything around there. My cityscape will be exactly the same, building on a point that's um, got the biggest glow. So this is a pink, actually. We're going to put some white on top of it. Here, in lighter parts as well. So everything's going to go to that point there. You pick a point that's your um, focal point, just like with the woman. And that's your point of interest. So I haven't even done the bird yet, but more of capturing your eye with that intense glow, hopefully. So it's all about having an area that the eye goes to. Stay down here, so calm it down with the raw sienna. A bit of a blue on the beak, but not a bright blue because I want your eye to stay at that point there. As it goes into shadow, a bit of blue. That broadens out your tone, your colour range as well. You've got mostly warms, now you've got some cools in there as well. have a background colour or not. You try it. Uh, which background colour then? I 
Jeff, Jeff is quite a nice background colour. Swing here, just blur. Out and in. Make this a bit darker so it shows up against the magenta. Maybe the magenta is not light enough. I can go through days of changing background colours. Never quite sure. But the most important thing, it's got a bit of a flutter to it. I do the same with paint. It um, just takes longer. Mm. Well, so you don't have to draw the whole bird. You could just leave bits. If you have bits that are uh, left to the imagination, it kind of works. Here it's quite a nice dark as well. If I get dark near to my absolute light, it gives me tonal value. We're going up and down as well, so I want it to be fluttering a bit more. I cut out quite a lot. I did that with the um, African lady, didn't I? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I quite like drawing with the background. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'll show you something I've been doing as an experiment. I brought it along after a break. Right, now I've got that kind of blur. This is exactly how I do it in, um, in oil. I decided where I want my eye to go a little bit more. So I go for texture, usually with a palette knife, something like that. In this case, it's uh, with a chalk. Total variation, I'll go even darker here. The head is too far away from the neck, so if you do have this one, 
Um, bring the head down a bit when you get a chance. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> There's only so much, you know, given off and out. So that's my smallest mark there. That's going to capture the eye. And your, your tiny marks kind of bring just slowly. <coughs> oh, that's how you after that, can't <coughs> um, Entice the eye to the focal point. So that's where I want you to go. Right, that head needs to be flatter, so I'll flatten that. And you do get a little flash of green here, so. That's really golden now. Bit of yellow here. Maybe up here, work around the head a bit more. Oh yeah, that brings out his, his eyes. And a bit of magenta there. I'm having to mix my colour. Some straight lines here as well, not many. Just a very mark making. Um, and, oh, these feet. A bit of magenta. So when black meets white, because I'm using black, which, um, again, the pastoral society will tell you not to do. Um, if, you, if you go into white, it goes a bit muddy. So I'll put a magenta next to it, and it stops it getting muddy. That dark up here. And then we need darker reds to transition into the dark. Dark red. <coughs> Ah, I'll leave it like that. That's that one. I'll sign that one as well. Yeah. Any galleries that represent me, I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, I thought I'd do another one next to this one. Um, yeah, if I do... If I do here, keep it quite small here, then you can chop it in half. <laughs> Look, so I can't go over that. Straight. Sorry, there you go. That's a better value, isn't it, that one? <coughs> right. I'll, I'll do a little one here. Um, puffins are good because you get instant tonal value. You get very dark and very light, but in the very dark and very light, you get colour as well. So, in, um, I'll just do a, back in the time, I've got Cityscape to do as well. Oh, okay. <coughs> right, 
So, <coughs> might be a bit small. So something really bright underneath. So merge that round. So that stops your dark being too boring. That's the under bit for the black, yeah. Although my black's not black, it's a blue. I will eventually go to, to a black. So the head, I'm going to have some of this. This is a colour I didn't think I had, actually. I thought I'd run out. It's a Sennelier pastel. Uh, see how intense it is? Um, I buy it in boxes from Jackson's, but I'm, I'm out at the moment. So I kind of create the movement first then put the detail on after. If I put darks on, you wouldn't get the colour um, around, the, you'd just get black and white. And the magenta will help the white and the darks mingle. Uh, so your whites are, local colour is white, but in the cool, you'll have a pale blue, paler than that, um, darker than that. So that sits really nicely with the magenta. And in the head, got that going in the head. Get it straight on. It's totally in the wrong place. Sorry, I've got to move my head. There. Here. Here. I had a bit of uh, housekeeping to do with the head. Then, as you go to light, you can go to very, very warm whites. So magenta goes back on. So this immediately you get tonal variation and a sure sense of where light's coming from. It's a real kind of bling. It's all about getting a bling in I think. Down there. Drawing as I go, making that a bit lighter. And this is what's nice about pastel, uh, the way I use it, not the way the raw pastel thingy wants it. <laughs> I can put a colour there and I just gently push it along a bit because it wasn't long enough. So I just uh, push it along and you can move colour just like you can with oil. This is working out a treat, this uh, magenta mixed with maple's yellow. So I'll do this in oil. Uh, in, um, in pastel, I think, oh, that will work in oil. So it's a good way of um, getting ideas. So here, I'm going to have a beak there. So I'm using the, the magenta as a back, as a underpainting. Here, I want him to shimmer a bit. So I'm going to put his legs in, oh, that legs much higher. So up here. legs here. Again, if you want to move the legs once you've got the picture at home, I'm not bothered. 
Disco, um, puffing. It's all spruced up for a night in South End. Oh, that's good, Sienna. I've got a really nice selection of reds, so I can't find them. I keep my pastels. Um, in a box with no <laughs> rhyme or if they're just chucked in a box. If anyone, um, if you get a pastel artist in and he's got a perfect box, ask him what he does for a living. <laughs> It's, um, it's also got a, this is where you decide where your glow is going to be. So with this I've decided there, with this I've decided the head. He's got these yellow bits there. But I'm going to um, not pay them any attention because it's going to upset my tonal balance. So I want to nullify them a bit. So I'm just going to paint them in raw sienna. So you have everything right, you lose impact. So where this warm meets this cool, I need a buffer colour because the two will make mud when they meet. So I use magenta because when the magenta goes into the blue, it becomes a blue magenta. So it gives you, it stops it being muddy. None of this is um, medium specific, it's just colour. So if you use watercolour or um, whatever medium you use, it's all the same rubbish. <laughs> uh, I've used the raw sienna down there, didn't really want to. Uh, I'll right, put a little bit of orange in the eye. They're really dark, I'm not good for a, my absolute dark in the eye. And to highlight on the darks, so I'm going to use a blue. Yeah, I'll use a blue. So that gives me a bit of form there. And there. And there. A bit more light here. And draw attention to the eye here. Um, I should put more highlights on the feet, or form the feet a bit more, but it's so far away from my focal point, I'm a bit reluctant to, so I'm not going to bother. Absolute light goes there. <coughs> there. I'm using blue highlights in these eyes because 
it's not my main point of interest. Um, that is, and that is. So, oh, poo. They're so clumsy, it's difficult to get them in the right place. That'll do. Right, that's another one. Oh, I'll sign it. I am being presumptuous that you actually want this, right? <laughs> Right, what's the time? <coughs>
So I'm just like the birds, I'm not drawing anything yet, I'm just making a globe. So to make that glow a bit, I'm going to dullen this with some blue. So that's this building at the side coming to here. If I get stuck, I'll look at the one I did. <laughs> copy that. So, in these cityscapes, night cityscapes, um, I tend to not put anything light at the edges. Because I want, so you'll get um, shops um, with lights on here, uh, shop lights on here. I ignore them because they compromise my uh, focal point, which would be here. So, all I'm doing now is creating the light that the eye is going to gravitate towards. And the magenta is great because it's going to mix with everything. So I've got to bring that down to about there, make this lighter. And I need dark up top. If I put my blue against that, I'll get a kind of a muddy colour. Put on that. So I'll go that kind of magenta. Maybe a bit darker. Oh yeah. So the picture book breaks into kind of thirds. This building here. Then a sky. I'll need to bring this globe down. So I'll do it with a magenta. Right, I'll try and move that around. The, uh, the other one I did is much simpler. So, the reason why I'm, I'm doing it like this is because I want to see what it's like if I take paint to it and make it more complicated. So already you're kind of interested in it because there's a glow about it. And I haven't drawn a bus or a window. As long as you have your focal point with the glow, that's all you need to worry about. Did you say that you do that in audibles? Sorry? Did you say that you do that in audibles, did you? Yes, the plan is to do one of these in oils. I haven't done it yet. My cars are too high. So you don't want to freak out when your cars are too high. <laughs> you want to just... Oh, I think we could go through. Um, How long have you been doing this, rabbit? Uh, all my professional life, because I, I went to art college, and they don't really teach you how to paint at art college, so you, you just grab your pastels and do whatever you fancy with it. So I never came into contact with the, um, the Royal, Marie, the Royal um, Pastel Society, so I, I, I was just ignorant, rubbing away. If I knew. So my bus is going to be there. So, oh, this, this, uh, another thing with um, when you do city scoops, work on that one. Uh, all the back of this one. Oh, I might get dirty. Do you think it's really important to have these rich, opaque pastels? Does that make all the yes. difference? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a massive difference. If you go and buy um, crappy ones. Uh, and you, you worry about, uh, you put your colour on and you colour, your yellow is not going over. Uh, you, you think it's you, and it's not you, it's just the, it's, it is you that you're tight, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you're rubbish, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, we've 
yellow. Yeah, you'll go any colour. Yeah. And also this this surface as well. So I'm I'm letting everything work for me. If you've got crappy paper and crappy pa uh, crappy pastels, yeah. it's going to look crappy. Um, so when when you do cityscapes, let's say you've got a uh, you've got a scene, and you've got and you're on uh, on your eye line. Um, so I'm taking a picture of a road, and there are people walking on that road. So let's say, do the carrot, there's people. All of these people's heads, as they go away, will be all in a line. They'll all be level with my eye line. Because as I stand there, I'm kind of average height. The road will do that at the matching point, and all these heads will be on the same uh, level. The legs will change. Uh, the buildings will come down. Cars, as you look at cars, one car will be there, another car will obscure it in front, another car will be there. What I've noticed when people first do cityscapes, they have a road, that's a new picture, and it does that. <laughs> To have a road like that, you'd have to be in a helicopter. The cars would be, there'd be a car there, a car there, a car there. They'd all be, you'd see them all, one after the other, going uphill. Bird's eye view. Yeah, bird's eye view. And all the people, the same. They all doing that. One above the other. They all walk like that. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to bring your eye line down and make all of your heads along the same line. So well, when we go through this, oh, it's upside down. When we go through this in a minute, you will see all of the heads are all in the same line. That's the wrong way round. <laughs> I'm doing this totally, I said to myself, right, I really like the way I've done that. I'm going to do a painting like that, and I'll do it tonight just to make sure I know what I'm doing. And I've done it in totally a different way. But it'd be interesting for you to see both. Right, so, <laughs> now I'll get, well, where's my colours? I'm like this at home. So, Michelle, she comes here and says, what have you lost? <laughs> that, so... Is she an artist as well? No, she was a dancer. Mm -hmm. A ballet dancer. Oh. She's not a ballet dancer anymore, she grew breasts. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much their the fate. <laughs> as soon as she grew breasts, that was it. <laughs> Now, uh, I'm going to bring that down. Let's see enough. So, my building needs to come down to here with a little magenta in it. That's my building. Whoa! Stay there. Round here. I'm going to stick with that as my perspective. That random line. And this one, this line. I'm going to do take this up a bit. Whoa. I'm going to do that. So that's, that's two lines of perspective I'm pretty much um, going to go with. Uh, line around here. Us. 
I'll make these darker in a minute. Uh, top the roof. And this is going to go around here. And let's get that bus in. So the bus is going to be over. Oh, yep. Yeah. I need to broaden that out. Docks. We'll go a bit darker. A bit more dark here. Kind of going to imply figures, but more kind of like that. I'm spending a bit longer on this than I anticipated. So, the drawing vehicles as well. Just, um, it's just a box with a bit of uh, two lights in it. Green inside the bus. just dig some colour. Mm. In there, inside the bus. Down the bus. I'm a bit wider than my picture. I've got some people here. They'll just be little guys like that. Um, I want them darker here and lighter here. Because they're further away. Any perspective, there's just lots and lots of dinks. These lines just went in straight away, no perspective. These are, um, yeah, it's a nice colour here. It's lots of reds, put those in. Society to be watching going, well, how could he do that? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say what they have to say about your lack of perspective. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you were doing that in acrylics, would you be doing it more or less the same way? Yeah, the same way. But what I'd do is, if, if you do it, um, I, I'm going to do it in, in oils in exactly the same way, but um, uh, it's easier to do it like this. Um, plan it. 
Ja. Und das ist doch da. Das ist da. Okay, hier ist ein kind of a wet feel. Um, yeah, plan it. Uh, and then copy it. So I've got bus there, a cab here. So dark there, I've got dark there, so I can go darker with this one. Would you ever use a pastel like this as an underpainting for oil or acrylic? Uh, you could do, it'd get a bit messy, that's the only thing. It'd be nice to just spray this and it'd be the paint, uh, finished painting, but um, I, I just can't be bothered with all double mounts and glass and everything. Double mounts? Is that what you need for pastels? Uh, or a trough. You just need a trough for, to catch the, um, the, dust. The, the dust that falls, yeah. Even if it's fixed, will it still shed? Yeah, it does, does seem to. Oh, and the windows here, the nice greens. And the greens just vary the, the palette. You don't even need to make it look like a bus. It's, if you see it as an abstract, you're kind of you're there, really. <laughs> Greens. Uh, I'm going to let the eye decide what it is by putting little pointers around and then, but not overtly say it's a bus. So just do that. Is that there? Is that there? It's just lots and lots of dips. Apart uh, from this, it's here. But there's a bus there, but you can't tell. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna change my mind about this because that's so light. I want your eye to go there. I've got to push that back. So I'm gonna ignore that. So more lights here. Here's my cab. So that's my cab. But my cab's just a black blob, really. Choose them individually, but I never know what I need because I never do a stop take. <laughs> so I just go in and get stuff and come home and find I've got. Oh, if you look here, I've got loads of oils. Let me share the blood to tidy the She really wouldn't. <laughs> I have asked her. She's, she's not that amenable. <laughs> She can get quite uh, moody sometimes. <laughs> she doesn't gaze at me anymore. <laughs> Obviously, you have your Friday night. <laughs> right. I'm pretty much going to ignore that bus. Because it's going to interfere with what's happening here. Right. Uh, now, I'm going to darken this round here because I want the eye to slowly get over there. And we're thinking, please don't fall over, please don't fall over. Mm -hmm. Oh, I really like this one. Darker here. So everything's getting you there. Uh, your first glow from the off is where your eye's going to go. Uh, so even darker so from a black. So okay, so the darker I make the sides, the more intense this will be. Uh, put some windows in. So the windows is where you start thinking. I must use perspective. No. 
about doing proper windows. I'll start showing your hand and then people say, hang on a minute, you can't do windows. Just keep it quiet. <laughs> or just do them randomly. So as this goes over to this, I need more of a buffer colour. So I'll get my magenta out. My magenta makes the blue mix with the Cool. Uh, I probably won't get a chance to do oils, but I'll get out the stuff I brought. Yeah. I got a bit distracted. When you do you oils, uh, do you do it wet and wet or wet, or do you wait till it dries? No, uh, it depends what I'm doing. Sometimes it's wet and wet, and sometimes it's not. I haven't really got. Uh, a plan about anything, really. Which can be a good and bad thing. I, I kind of agonise when things aren't going well. Um, but then you, you hit a bit of a groove and things are fine. Right, so I've got a nice sweep across here. That immediately gives you your um, architectural detail. So that gives you a bit of a glow. So everything is going here. I brought a portrait um, drawn up. Actually, I haven't drawn it up. I'll uh, show you in a minute and you'll go, what? So I'm doing everything in an up and downy um, glow. And back here, I've got another architectural detail. I'm going to sell it to Russians, they'll want the uh, proper details in. <laughs> uh, some windows up here. I'm not counting them, you know, it's just uh, random. It's all random. red spots here. And got some columns. So as I get out this way, I reduce the frequency that these things happen. So your eyes go here. Uh, nice little thing here. Gives you this spin of the road. And some I've got shops here, if I lighten them too much I lose this, so I'm going to keep it in the blues. I don't want to do too much. So it's just mark making, mark making here. I could try and turn a window, uh, a light on here, see if it uh, seems alright. Does it distract? It does a bit, doesn't it? Oh, okay. um, the curve here gets a nice light from the headlights of the bus. And now I put my final highlights on. See how zingy they are. Uh, reds as well. 
tiny, tiny line uh, lights. This is a light yellow. And you get some shots here, maybe. So I'm just putting little tiny dots in. Here. So the frequency of the mark is where your eye goes to, hopefully. More of a red glow. That's not red. That's not there. Yay. More darks there. Darks there to give it more oomph. But see how simple that is. There's no perspective at all in it. It's just um, simple. Right, I'll get the oil stuff out. Uh, yeah, I can try and get the oil stuff out. windows from the shed, I'm using those as pallets at the moment. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is still keep the not volume on. application of paint pretty much. Um, random application of greens um, and then I draw on it with pastel. So I've got one here. Is it oil, oil pastel or chalk? Uh, chalk pastel. So what I do is I take that going off. then I So I've got some um, orchids at home, uh, roses, and other flowers I don't know the name of. So what I do is I do that, and then I get a uh, chalk, and I decide, right, um, this does this, 
this down to here, there, there. But I don't like doing the same thing over and over again. So I do like doing birds, but I fancy trying different things. And um, doing these flowers at the moment is um, something a little bit more abstract. That's too big. Like that. Maybe that. So I'll draw that. Actually, the one I sold, um, Michelle drew it out. I just did this and said, right, there's blue. <laughs> Worked out quite well. Right, so draw like that in this area here I quite like. So that can go that, like that. Then I get my blue. I mix up Naples yellow and what's called Tharlo blue and zinc white. It's a, an oil colour, but it gives you a real nice, it's quite zingy, but it's quite cheap as well. Some of that cerulean is really expensive. So there, I paint out the shape. Why do you do it in pastel first? I draw it out so I get a, a really clear idea about where my edges are going to be. So the paint's applied quite painterly, and then I carefully do this, and I hope it's going to kind of look like magnolia without me painting. The worst thing about floral painting is um, they look a bit cheesy. <laughs> so I want it to look a little bit more like a design. So that's this. This is my sort of ongoing project at the moment. What do you mean cheesy? Yeah. Um, they they look a bit they they a bit, bit twee. Yeah, they've been done so so long for. So, um, by so many people, and to do them like this gives them a bit more contemporary cutout, I suppose. Can I say it's a bit Matisse? Yeah, I suppose so. So you get a hard edge, but so you get rid of all of this, but you get that energy. Uh, of going through, so I'm painting like this, and then I cut it. But if I don't like it, I just go over it again. You used that same technique with acrylics, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, acrylics is easier. Yeah. So I have to wait for a day or two days for it to dry. But you're not painting petals so much. So it's really nice, but I really like it on the. Um, Mm. On the branches, you see kind of different colours coming in and out. So I'll take this over here. And you can do it with any. The flower has to have good um, silhouette shape. Will you now fill in all the gaps between flowers and branches? No, no, I'll, I'll draw it out and then I'll pass it on to. Um, because it doesn't require any skill, obviously. So I'll just pass it on to my minion. <laughs> he will do it for me. Kind of like um, David Hurst does. Except I just have one person working for me. She she has housekeeping, <laughs> which um, she does really well with. <laughs> She fell on her feet, really, after um, 
not being able to dance anymore, finding me. <laughs> Does she know that? Uh, I tell her every day. <laughs> You've got to keep the, uh, the spark alive, haven't you? <laughs> so, this would be something like this. So all of that gets cut out. And you get these... So there's no real planning there. You cut it out and you get this kind of weird, lovely shape. Which, um, and uh, I'm doing long thin ones at the moment. So that's one idea. I'll show you some other stuff. Oh, I've got this, uh, this lady. That's going to be a, a bird. I've got time to leave that. <laughs> oh, this is a bird in progress. So I, um, I, I do, uh, I use these, these go to the art fairs. Um, kind of all over, Hong Kong, um, Singapore. Uh, so I get into this stage. And um, so that's the photo I'm copying. But I don't stick um, religiously to it. Is that done in oil? Yeah, this is oil. You but, can do it in acrylic. Sorry? You can do it in acrylic. Yeah, yeah I, I can do it in acrylic. <coughs> but um, I just uh, like oils. Okay. I've always stuck with oils. So what I do is um, I'll get it to this stage. I've got loads going uh, on at the same time. So this uh, this background, I'll kind of cut in and cut it out again. I'll use these brushes. I don't know if I brought these the last time. These are angular brushes mm -hmm. from Rosemary Co. Um, this is a Brilliant Pink by Al Colley. And I'll, I'll take this and put it there. Do a little stroke like that. Back here. Do a little stroke like that. Another colour I use a lot. Grenacridone Magenta. Running out of space. So I'll mix that with the pink. Use this on the magnolia. And I'll give myself this kind of energy. So the birds are made up of lots of these kind of lines. But I don't they're kind of lots of little marks that come together to bring out the bird. So that looks quite solid, so I'll take a line into there, or a line down here. Oh, it's kind of changing direction. The, uh, the lines, it's the same thing with these birds. What's alive? It's not alive. My well, students to do, uh, oh, how come, look, I've got this yellow here. So watch this yellow. Oh, that's their upside down. So I'll grab that yellow, and usually your yellows, you're like, that, that won't go over anything. See how bright that is, and it's and you can use it opaquely. What is it? It's cadmium yellow deep. Mm. It's um, okay. I've got two. This is my cheaper one, which is eighteen quid. <laughs> the, the other one's something like twenty five quid. So I I'll use it like that. So it gives a zing. Uh, I'll add more colour out as well. Uh, so the difference between uh, professional painting and um, amateur is probably investment in materials. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of zing there, 
This green's nice. Take that green. Oh, it's dirty. It's the other thing with uh, demoing in oil. Gotta have a clean pan. So I'd, I'd be at home. I'd clean my brush. Find a little area in my palette. Mix and mix. Yeah, that's the wrong colour. So I'll clean my brush. That's how I get the colours clean. It's not, it's not sexy to watch. But, um, that's what I do. Get that green. And then, ping it in there. And whiten it. So I'll, I'll do all that work just for that little stroke. And you kind of look at it and go, eh. um, <laughs> get a little bit of. I'll show you some other stuff really quickly in a minute. So I'd have eventually clarity in one point, maybe here, mm. and a pale blue to go round the eye. Because I'm using my smaller strokes here, the eye will gravitate towards that point, and along here. Simple! Uh, I'm doing, uh, I did a demo and I did, did an afro head. I really like the idea of doing afro heads. Uh, I've got a green one, an orange one and a pink one on the go. Uh, I'm going to make her out of big vertical strokes, just like the, um, the cityscape. Um, so I'll, I'll pick her out eventually but with lots of vertical strokes. I was a bit amb over ambitious today. Uh, another thing I was going to do is... <laughs> This, I've got a dancer, she's kind of diving down. Um, this background's made up of lots and lots of colours with rollers and all sorts. I thought um, uh, it's, a, it's a nice background to use. And the way I'm going to paint it is also with vertical strokes. So I'll probably um, put a line around it, put colour in, take it up with a ruler, uh, and, or, or a big palette knife, and then paint her. Uh, so that, that was the plan. Um, how do I get them on there like that? <laughs> projector. <laughs> eh? Yes. I don't, don't always use a projector. But if you want to plan your picture out really quickly, um, I could draw it. And then I'll have to keep moving the arms. Oh no, that's too big, that's too small. You stick it on a projector, put it on, the pic uh, put it on here. Uh, and then just move it around until you get the composition you like. Uh, what I'll do is I'll attack it with colour, just like I have tonight, and then I'll put a line back into it. So I, I will draw it eventually, but for, for the start, it's a really good way of putting random colour on, roughly in the right place. So all of this, all of these light greens, can come through the figure when I do that. Um, I don't know what, this kind of thing might do well in an art fair, not so much in your local gallery, but in a funky art fair, it might do all right. The original one of that is this. See how it's much simpler? Um, that one's kind of better. It's, uh, there's no blues on this side. Yeah, I think prefer that one a bit more. But the bus as well. <laughs> The bus is one line, one line, one line. And there's three lines that make up that bus. Uh, there's no bus there, it's just a red line. But it's simple. Uh, and that, that's kind of why I like it. Right, I'll stop there. Yeah. Oh.
anybody got any questions they want to ask about before we then go home? <laughs> yeah. I can assure everybody, having had emails from this lovely wife, Michelle, that um, she's a very happy lady. And, uh, <laughs> backs it up beautifully. There's no problem there at all. Uh, but I think we've learned enormous amount again tonight. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'll actually paint some, uh, some stuff next time. I can't. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.